three, two, one. Hey folks, welcome into our Sabres watch party. And we are happy to have you with us on our social platforms, including Facebook Live. We have another Zoom party in store with Sabres alumni as part of the golden season and as part of what we've been rolling out the last eight weeks, which was Sabres classic games on MSG. Right now, the game that you're watching at home, Ottawa Buffalo game seven from 1997. The Senators have a 2-1 lead in period number three and all week long we've been focused on the biggest rivalries in the history of the Sabres it started with Boston and then Montreal then Toronto those are the three teams Buffalo's played most in their franchise history but the newcomer onto the scene in the 90s was the Ottawa Senators who became a tough division rival and as we know these two teams have now met four times in postseason play. Marty Baron, welcome in. We're looking forward to a, a larger watch party here tonight with the Sabres alum spanning the decades. Yeah, I had to turn my volume down on my phone because I'm keeping up with Facebook to see what everybody's saying. And there's already a bunch of participants on Facebook. So thanks for joining us. And yes, rivalry week. Uh, not unlike the rivalry I had with Rob Ray every time we stepped on the ice for practice. I know I won most days, so Razor, huh. sorry that I was the ultimate winner in practice against you. Well, Marty, I, I always tried to make you feel good because oh, I knew you. you probably would never get an opportunity to do it in a game. So I figured if you could do it in practice, it was a start. Maybe try to boost your confidence a little bit. Razor, I thought you just, you know, once you beat Dominic in practice, you kind of checked out and really didn't care about the other tenders. Is that right? You know what? Somebody put out on Instagram the other day, I scored on Dom when he was in Chicago. And I'd never even, <laughs> I never even remembered it. And it was out there and I'm like, I watched it probably 25 times. It was actually a pretty nice goal. It's, Cut do you have, down the gut and I beat it, yes. Do you have a, what about a stick though from the occasion? Oh, uh, at that time, Dom was nothing. He was just <laughs> another guy. So hey, I never even thought. Wait a minute, about you're it. assuming it went in office. Out there, I was like, I never even realized it. When this you score so many goals, you just you forget on who the big ones you got. Yes. Well, Marty interrupted you. As you know, Razor, if I do the pleasantries, I always introduce you as a 40 goal scorer in the course of his NHL career, Rob Ray. Don Luce is with us. Danny Gare is with us. Dan Dunleavy's with us. The party just gets bigger. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? What's that? How are you doing, Mr. Luce? This rivalry week began for us with a 70s era clash and uh, Montreal Canadiens. You guys, that line, Luce, Ramsey, Garrett was uh, prolific on that particular night en route to a series win. Oh, we're prolific every night for crying out loud. Come on. <laughs> I Honey, you had, you had the uh, Gordie Howe hat trick that night. You scored, you had an assist, you got into a fight. Uh, you fought Mario Tremblay. The kid was 18 years old. Like, how about that? Uh, so what? Asians make no, I don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> Do the nurses at the home discriminate when they help you get hooked to the internet? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> I feel like that's going to be a trend for this uh, call tonight. Hey, Larry Carrier is on the line. Hi, Larry. How are you? Hawk may be muted there. He may be. We got Gio in the bottom corner, at least in my bottom maybe. corner. Hey, Gio, what's up? Hedgie's up sideways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, Bill, the name Bill, Bill Height. But he's, he's <laughs> How could he do that? Flip your phone the other way, Mr. Height, and we'll get you the right way. <laughs> We're going to be in a lot of pain if we try to converse with him a lot here. Uh, Matty Ellis. <laughs> 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 we just joined the party, hawk, Brian. Hawk just sitting there like they were going to talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> we're trying to Larry, hawk. <laughs> Larry's part of that NHL Network uh, series years ago, Marty. Frozen in time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there oh okay. Billy's got the wife. Did it for him. Good job, Billy. <laughs> oh, Bill Height, how are you? <laughs> I think he must be muted too. Oh, right? he's muted now. I can't see him. <laughs> okay. So we got the visual. You got to put these guys through a course. Audio's coming. Oh. Jim Lorenz is back with us. Hi, Jim. Hey, how are you guys? Sorry about that. Oh, it's no. All, right. all good. All good. And Gio's sitting next to you. Hey, nice guys. Gio, how are you? Good. You? Gio. Very good. Great to Gio, have you. Gio, what's on your hat? What's that hat, Gio? It just says Lake Living, buddy. Uh, that's what you're doing right now. Eh? I want to be. <laughs> the, weather's, the weather's not there yet. 
Oh uh, man! Got any shoreline <laughs> left on Lake Ontario, or what? Uh, I was there today. Yeah. It was a little, little high. It's not as yeah. bad as it's been in the last couple of years, but it's uh, it's creeping up there right now. Now so. let's hope the hold steady there. Larry Carrier, can yeah. you hear us all right? I know, Larry, you're muted. I know that we just need to get you unmuted there if we can. Okay. There How about now? Yeah. Uh, perfect. Great, great to see you. Great. To Good see to see you, you guys. Hey, Larry. The watch hey, party is. Uh, Hi, is Hey, Angie Boz got the mute button on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we got to unmute Mr. Hype, but once we got it figured out, it's going to be good. I'm telling you. Mr. Hype oh, is here. Mr. Hype is here. Mr. Yeah. Hype is there. There we are. Hey, Haji. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Were you working out before? Hanging straight from the. The railings or something before, or what? What are you talking about? You were sideways. Uh -huh. You were sideways before. Oh, yeah, I guess. I guess I'm stuck it up, yes. Yeah, it's good right. job. It's all right, he's a defenseman. I, I don't know this stuff, you know? I don't know why you're yeah. Well, yeah. Bill said Bill said to me earlier that that's usually around his bedtime. Bill, <laughs> did you get your nap in after dinner? That's what I want to know. I did. Yes, I did. I had a little nap. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, boy, you look good, Billy. <laughs> Take a few bites of a chocolate bar, you'll be all right. Well, that wouldn't hurt either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Thanks. Well, thanks a lot for joining, guys. That is great. Uh, the guy that scored game seven overtime goal in this game that we're watching here in Buffalo is going to join us in a little bit, hopefully, Derek Plant. But we've got guys from the 70s, the 80s, 90s, 2000. So it's definitely uh, fun to have a, a broad spectrum of alumni to talk about rivalry. Uh, some of you have played on different teams. Some of you have, you know, just been with the Sabres. So, uh, you know, I guess we can throw it out to uh, – how about this, Danny Gare – uh, what was it like playing for the Sabres against some of the rivals and maybe coming back to play against the Sabres and having them as a rival? Well, Marty, first of all, it's great to see everybody, you know, um, with this difficult time we're going through. I just want to, I want a little shout out to the hospital employees, all the doctors, the nurses, first responders. I know how much they put themselves in harm's way. So first of all and foremost, thank you so much for that. But I, I look, I look, I look back <laughs> when it's funny, I was talking to my good friend Don Luce today and teammate, and, you know, we were talking about the old Adams division and we were trying to figure out the teams. I knew that there was Boston involved with our team. I knew our, in our division, I knew Toronto was in our division. And then, and we only had 18 teams, right, Donnie, back then in the league? Yeah. 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 So, so one of the things, obviously, Toronto was a great rivalry just across the border, and especially with the background of Punch and Black and so forth. So we always had a great rivalry with the Leafs and the old Maple Leaf Gardens, and it was so fun to go up there on a Saturday night and, and to see the great ice, the jet ice, as they call it. And we always, we always played right, Billy, right? Played well there and usually beat them, right? So Yeah. For sure. And then they would then they would come to Buffalo. And I remember Daryl Sittler telling me later in life that uh, he hated playing in the old odd. He said, I'll never forget the time we beat him. I think it was 12 3 or something like that. And he says, I would listen to the fans in the auditorium go, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, we want eight. And, and it was, it was that type of a, an era. I think, you know, when you looked at the Bruins, it was a great rivalry with us. Um, always a tough team to play against, and they're building the old gardens. But I'd also like to throw in, I think, in my early years, the Montreal rivalry. When I, before I came to Buffalo, you know, the thank you Sabres in six games, Marty, and um, we ended up beating them as we saw the game the other – as you guys saw the game the other night. Yep. Um in the second game so great rivalries original six teams and it really I think helped our team um, get recognition more maybe in um, when winning against those teams and it brought us together as a group to show that we could be better or as good as them and we accomplished that. 
Can anybody name the other team in the Adam division? Yeah, tell them that one. <laughs> I'm going to guess Cleveland for a brief time. Close. <laughs> no, not. Can they, Hawk? Oh. Uh, Lorenzo had the ball. Do you know who the fourth team was? Yeah, under I, didn't, I didn't know. What, Quebec? No, they weren't even in the league. Hart, no. Hart, Hartford, no. No. You'll never get it, I'm telling you. Is it yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> Was it Minnesota? It was the California Golden Seals. Oh, oh, my God. oh. unreal, huh? Oh my God. Wow. Hmm. By the way, that game, uh, the game we played Toronto, we beat them fourteen to five. Okay. And we we still have an NHL record. We scored one. We scored nine goals in one period. That's really? an NH, That's still an NHL record. Cool. Hmm. We've had good luck with Toronto. I'm just looking wow. at that. 117, 74, and 27 record against Toronto over the years. Yeah. In the well, 2000s, we, 35, we, 16, and 8. And in the 90s, 12, 5, and 5. It was yeah. sick. Dominant yeah. over them. There's, yeah. there's a funny story about that, too. Of course, the, that rivalry being the, the two cities are so close. But when Punch and Black, of course, left Toronto to come uh, to Buffalo, uh, I think it was, it might have been the first game that they played uh, back in Maple Leaf Gardens. And when they announced the three stars of the game, Punch put his skates on and came out as a number one star. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was, uh, that was quite a oh, moment. He, wa he wanted to do that. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Well, and that, you know what? A lot of times, guys, a lot of times, a lot of times the players and the games make the rivalry, but isn't that one? I was talking with Dean Brown leading into this Ottawa Toronto series, talking with Dean Brown who called the, the Ottawa Buffalo playoff. And, you know, he said, look, you really need a playoff series to create a rivalry. You need some hatred to develop. You got to play each other a lot. You got to go, you know, play each other the next night and just get right back into it. And with hockey, the way it is now, it, it really says something about that Buffalo Toronto rivalry because I mean, it's the fans that keep that one going. No matter where the teams are in the standings, a razor. I mean, the fans have really kept that rivalry. Well, right they have, there. and when when you don't play other than four times a year, and you play them twice in a week span, you know, throughout the whole season, it makes it tough. But you know, back in the '80s and '90s, you could play the Bruins, you know, ten times during the regular season. You know, it just seemed like you know you were playing Hartford, Boston, Montreal all the time. And uh, that's, I think, guys, I think you guys could say yourself, that's how the rivalries happen. Yeah. Because when you played that yeah. amount of games against that amount, same team all the time, it, it, everybody got pissed off by the end. Yeah. Razor, you even got to know well, the fans in Quebec City, right? I mean, that's what oh, happens. Yeah. You go to Quebec City 10 times, they jump into your bench, and then you start <laughs> taking care of it. Well, I think we had a special rivalry with Montreal because a lot of the guys on our team were from Montreal or Quebec. Right. Right. And uh, and we ended up, like you were saying, Razor, like you end up playing not only the same team, but against the same line all the time. Like I know my D partner, Lee Folkman and I, we'd be playing against the Riseboro, Tremblay, Lambert line, and you develop a real hatred towards them, which yeah. ended up happening, you know, when we played that game three after we were up to nothing in the 75 semifinals back in Montreal, and they got up on we wanted to cause some problems. Like we went, we were trying to get into their bench and we wanted to, uh, we just had a huge brawl and, and that line, you know, because we were playing with each other so much. Larry, I wanted to bring this up to all the, all the guys that were in that, that series. What the heck happened? You go up 2-0 and then yeah. you get scored 15 to two in the next two games. Bounce. And then you still come back and win the series in six. I, I, I'm just blown away by those scores. Well, that's what it was all pre planned. We are just going to let them feel good about the sports. And then yeah. put the hammer on it. You know, it's just, we are just toying with them. Oh, oh Floyd Smith came oh, out with his best. Sure, a lot of character coming back. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened in Montreal, but I know before the series started, I think to a man, we thought we were going to win the series. We played right. them yeah. five times yeah. during the season, and we had won four of, four of them and tied the fifth one. So we always felt, I think, as a team that we were the better team. I don't know what happened in those two Montreal games, but certainly it showed in the sixth game when we won the fifth game at home, we went back to Montreal. We actually dominated that game. It was a 4-3 game, but they scored a couple of fluke goals in the third period. But we right. were generally 
certainly the better team. We always thought we were the better team than they were, in, uh, certainly that year. But I know I what I know what happened in Montreal. Gio, you know what happened in Montreal. You played <laughs> they're, there. Enjoying, they're enjoying the nightlife in Montreal a little too much. <laughs> in three and four. Get yourselves to bed once in a while. Yeah. Well, the guilty playoffs. conscience usually worked. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but I, I remember, I remember, guys, after we won game five, coming back into Montreal. And, um, you know, I, I really, we had a group of guys and, a lot, and, and different lines that could score, uh, you know, at any given time. And Lorenzo, I think her line... You guys played an awesome game. Was it with Maxie McNabb and um, Spinner? I can't remember who Duds maybe, but you guys really you scored. I think most of the goals in Game Six, and that was that was a great great night to beat any time you won in the forum. You know. Yeah, that was that was, a, that was an exciting time, especially when you know uh, in the last four or five minutes that that you're going to yeah. the finals. Uh, it was an incredible feeling. Yeah. Well, our soon-to-be man of the hour on the classic game we're airing now, Derek Plant, is on the line with us. Thanks for joining in, Derek. How are you? Absolutely. Thanks, fellas, for letting me come on. <laughs> Thank you for holding out on me for a while there. No, we wanted well, you to Well, we hang didn't really want to, but it was just kind of your day. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, uh, for anybody who is watching right now, uh, the classic game, it's tied at two in the third. And, Derek, you were just given credit for the tying goal on that face-off against Yashin, and Yashin essentially – Drew it back into his net. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I think I was trying to go to the net on my backhand, of course. And he realized it too, and he just backhanded right in his own net. And I was like, "Yahoo!" <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it looked like the he just goal I ever scored. I didn't have to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that was pretty good. Well, it's awesome that you're on because uh, obviously that series was so memorable. And to this day, you are the only game winning goal scorer in a game seven in Buffalo Sabres history. So we'll dive into that a little bit more. But we, you know, we're going rivalries. Maddie Ellis has been quiet so far. Maddie, I mean, for yeah. you, just diving into the NHL and, and playing for a few different teams. But I know Buffalo is where you played most. What was the, was it Boston for you at the time or who, who was the big team? Well, I guess coming over, uh, arriving here in, in 2008, I still kind of was part of a, a bit of the leftover remnants of, uh, of what went on with, with Ottawa, um, you know, prior to, to the arrival with, uh, with all the fireworks and, you know, uh, with, with what happened there. So there was still some of that leftover tension uh, with Ottawa, but definitely hit the nail on the head where, where you know, the, the juices really got flowing against Boston um, in 09-10 playoff series and just you know a, a lot of uh, a lot of kind of built up uh built up tension with that team they were a good hockey club we were a good hockey club at the time um it, we matched up we matched up well with it with each other and you know there were it was always it was always heated playing boston i know the guys mentioned even toronto um and that's another one but i think for me um in my era you know the things that that went on between between us and and the bruins I mean, the you, you always knew that that you were you were in for a heavy game. You always knew that you know things things were going to be tight and and things could kind of you know spark at at, at any moment. And, you know, kind of history shows that. Yeah, but the only guy on the screen that's got bite marks to prove it is Danny, right? <laughs> um, actually, it, it, that was Rick Sealy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were in the pile, though, right? I came out of the penalty box and Winston, Winston bit him in the back, and I got a three-game suspension and took on John. Yeah, he had big welts in the back, Rick ceiling. Yeah, he bit him. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so <True>. are, we, <laughs> are we trending away from that as, as far as rivalries, or, or is it still something that can evolve, especially based on – you know, playoff series and repeated playoff series. I, I think it has to do with that. I, the yeah. more times you face a team, uh, that's when it happens. Uh, back in the day when they changed the format and you played your division eight times, uh, you created a little bit of that. Um, it was that mid 2000s, somewhere in there when they changed that and you're playing your division a ton of times. When I was in New Jersey, we played the Rangers, and then we saw them in the playoffs. And so you see them, you know, almost 17 times that year, you know, 15 times, and it just gets crazy. Like, it's – that's what happens. In, in my time in Buffalo, we never had that true rivalry feel because we didn't 
we didn't have a team that we really battled with that we 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 got into the trenches where we saw so many times. I think in Montreal it was the Bruins. Uh, the the playoff series we had against the Bruins. It was uh, the big bad Bruins at the time, and they were throwing their body around, and that's what created that tension between the two teams. And you knew every time you went to play them, it was going to be heated, and there was going to be something behind it. And so I think those playoff series nowadays is what creates it in that repeated playoff series, I think, uh, do, over a few years. Do you guys think the better them in the game, they should maybe start doing that again, play more of your division? Yeah. And not, maybe yeah. maybe play the Western Conference once and then double well, up on the guys in your own division and just try to create that. It may create a better game. Yeah. Well, in the, when the original six, they played 14 times during the regular season. You remember that? <laughs> oh, that's right. You played the original six. Hey, <laughs> Gordy. Look at his head. You played forever without a helmet. <laughs> I love you, well, Lucy. I, love I know you. The, love year, you, Lucy. <laughs> the year you're talking about, Gio, you played your division eight times. So there was, you know, what was it, six teams? So you basically played 40 games against your division <laughs> and another 42 against the rest of the league. I, you had to hate some other teams. When I joined the Flyers, we went 0 and 8 against the Pittsburgh Penguins that year. And Pittsburgh, obviously, across Pennsylvania rival, I mean, we hated them. The puck wasn't even dropped at the start of the game. We wanted to kill them because we knew we weren't going to beat them at the end of the night anyway. So I, I think if you want some heated rivalries, yeah, six or eight times a year really does the trick. Yeah. What about the back to backs? We, we seem to go, I don't know, it's, it's been weird. The NHL history has been kind of, kind of mixed on this in the last 20 years. You know, we went through a phase where you would do two games in the same city, spread out over three days. But for most of our guys on here, um, it was back-to-backs and home-and-home and things like that. And, and even in the playoffs, you were playing on back-to-back days. And I think, like Danny and, 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 and Don, I, I was looking at the – I think it was the 76 preliminary round. You're against St. Louis. Right. And, and on back-to-back days, you guys both score in overtime to, to win the series in three games. And I'm thinking, holy cow, like this is it's amazing so scary. Just how, how tightly congested yeah. and, and compressed, I should say, the schedules were back then. But it has to fuel the rivalry, doesn't it? Absolutely. I think that playing back-to-back it really makes it more exciting myself. You, the players get into it. You don't have that day off, and you just go out of the next. Day. So it's it's to me. It, it, it's a rivalry. Yeah, it's almost like a continuation of the game, right? It's just right yeah. into the next day, and whatever happened the night before is going to get resolved the next day. And that's you know, and today yeah, it's not as prevalent, but there was a lot more roughness going on back in that day too. So yeah. I think any 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 time you can capitalize on on that raw emotion where where it doesn't have a chance to, to dissipate and to go away where you know those feelings kind of bubble and are and are there and are consistent throughout your whole lineup i mean it's it's based on on that emotional response and when you're playing teams uh, often and you're coming right back and you're playing back to back against the same team or or it's a series or you know you're playing eight times you know there's a there's emotion that's that that's real and, it, and, you know, it needs a place to go. And I think that's where you get some, you know, some, some of the best hockey. Yeah, but Slanner, like you were saying, that's what happened with the back-to-back. Like each team felt that they had to set the tone early in the series. And that's why the games were very physical back then. Yeah, good point. Good point, Hawk. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember that series very well. Uh, just at St. Louis, we had over 100 points, I think, that year. And we had to play them in a two out of three series. And I think the circus was in town in Buffalo, and we had to play in in St. Louis, right, guys? And yeah, and we, yeah. We, first game we lost. Yeah. We lost that game. Stanowski stood on his head, the goaltender, and he did the same in Buffalo. And we went to twice to overtime to, to to try to win it. I mean, it was two out of three was not fun. And I I think that deciding game, I think Stanowski, what uh, I think he had fifty eight saves. Yeah, or something. it was nuts, crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. you guys talk about two out of three. I mean. Who knows if, if and when the, the, the game resumes, what the playoffs may look like. But do you think shorter series fuels the hatred more because you know you have to put it all on the line right away in a best out of three, uh, maybe to get the emotion really amped up? 
I think there's a better chance for an upset of two or three, but right. I don't, right. I don't know if it fuels it. I don't think it. I think it's an advantage for the uh, underdog team. Good point. Yes. Yeah. They don't have to win on a continuous basis. They win two games. Mm -hmm. In the best of seven, they still lose the series. Well, we saw Mayday think... score in, in overtime on Monday night. And right. I believe the Sabres were 20. How many, how many points behind Boston? 20, Duff, are you in 20, 23 that year. And remember, they lost behind. seven games in a row going into the playoffs. Like, it was just it, – it, it looked like a, a bit of a toxic matchup, quite frankly. And then it, it turns into Buffalo's first ever series win against the Bruins. Just yeah. – you can never predict it, right? And th right. And – Three of the four, of course, were in overtime. And then, as fate would have it, the next round, you lose three out of four in overtime. So, yeah. It, it is the game of momentum. The team that gets the early advantage, they gain more confidence. They get better, whether it's a, a three-game series, five- or a seven-game series. Uh, you get the momentum. Momentum, it's hard for the other team to stop it. Well, for all of you, like, if you could name the one team for you personally that was – the biggest rival uh for me it was uh, probably the flyers i think the four of the six years we were in buffalo we played the flyers and i just got the hate in those guys you know they had the, the legion of doom and we had some tough guys but even when my kids look up youtube videos now it's always the flyers and the sabers fighting each other so yeah um, that, that was probably it right there i would say toronto for us for me yeah, I, I would agree with that. Toronto and, and Montreal would be a close second. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, 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 then, you know, you, later it was the Islanders for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we just couldn't get by them. But, yeah, those two, and then when the Islanders started their run, that was a big part of If we could ever get by them, you know, we could have done okay. But, for again, me, sometimes the, the rivalry, as, as Derek, you mentioned, the Flyers, it happens also because there was controversy, right? Like you, you know, there was some – John LeClaire was after you, but John LeClaire's goal through the side of the net created right. controversy, created the rivalry because now you hated the Flyers. You said they were <laughs> cheaters. Although, hey, tickets will tell you, you take the goal. If they give it to you, you take the goal, right? Like, <laughs> complain. You probably had a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They ask you how. They ask you how many. Yeah. I think part of the uh, – Part of the hatred in Philadelphia is when we go there, the locker rooms would be as hot as they could be, like 80 degrees in there, and they wouldn't turn the lights on. They wouldn't put the nets on the ice. No, Bobby Clark just playing the mind games. Yeah. <laughs> the old for, me, for me, it was still Montreal. I thought um, we always had great success against them. Yeah. I think the one year I think we played them eight times during the season, we beat, beat them all eight times. Uh, we beat them twice in the playoffs that I remember. I remember uh, – meeting Ken Dryden after uh, after we both retired and he said we hated playing against you guys uh, and we we always played so well in the forum um, the rivalry was great there were great great skating teams both of us uh, we played clean hockey but it was hard hitting I I, I well know, the tempo I, I agree Billy the tempo was the quickest that we played yeah and I know uh, running into Yvonne Cornway the other day here in Montreal he said to me, like, he felt like our D was so big and physical that he was still hurt. His back was still hurting from back then. But those guys, they paid a price to score the goals. And they played at a pace on the four check and puck movement that was unbelievable. And we didn't see that with other teams in that era. Even uh, even when we, uh, in warm-up before a game at, at the odd, when we were playing Montreal, the 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 crowd noise and the sense of the game was already starting in warm up. Like everybody was so wild the game, whether it was the players and the fans. It was just uh, I thought it was just a tremendous atmosphere. Well, did they did the Canadians fans travel as they do now? Like I mean, you go no. there, you know how it no. is. Like you go you go no. on the road and there's a ton of Montreal Canadian fans <laughs> everywhere. Like was that that way in the odd when you guys were playing them or was no. it? No, they we were sold out. Here. You couldn't get tickets. There, yeah. We, yeah. We, I think they said we had a waiting list of 5,000 seats for, for so they're all Buffalo. Yeah. Fans. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes great. a big difference too, right? Like yeah. you, you're does. at home, your crowd's yeah. feeding you even more, feeding that hatred to that rivalry. Like that's, that's a big part of that. I think you get, you know, some of the times when you were playing Toronto and it's half filled with Toronto, it's, it's hard 
at home to get that kind of animosity when half the building is filled with yeah. the other fans. You know, I, it just adds another layer to that animosity, who, I think. Who had the Atlanta Thrashers as a uh, rival, right? Like, if, yeah. who cares? Like, you yeah. go to Atlanta, there's 5,000 people. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Florida Panthers. Uh, but you definitely show up in a building like Boston and they have their video montage as they're starting the game and you can feel the building shake and you're like, oh boy, this is not going to be an easy one here tonight. So, and I was a goalie, so I didn't have to face, you know, six foot two, 225 pound guys in the corner. I just had to worry about the, you know, the puck, but uh, yeah, definitely. I've seen, I've seen the video of you fighting, Marty. Don't, don't cut yourself short. Uh, same seen here, Marty. Fight. Marty, when I was scouting junior and when you first started pro, I seen you scrapping, dropping the mitts, hacking guys. Oh boy, Marty. Guys, thank you. The checks in the mail. Yo, <laughs> Larry, checks in the mail. <laughs> you, you, you kind of bring hey, up Marty. an itch. You bring up an interesting point, Marty, just uh, like with the, the atmosphere in the building and, and, game presentation it, that's a buzz now right like everybody's yeah. kind of fixing it up so i'm curious like for the 70s era guys here like how loud was it in those buildings from that standpoint just music being i, I know it's completely different but did it still play a role because I, when derek was talking about philadelphia all i can think is like they've got the volume cranked to 15 in that building and it's just like you can't even yeah. hear anything it's nuts yeah but duffer on the other point of that i think back then and even in the in the late 80s and that in the early 90s they didn't need that because i think right. the game itself created that you didn't have the video boards you didn't have all those kind of luxuries you had yeah you had some music playing you know after the whistle but in the most case people were so fired up about the game that they created the electricity they're a big right. part of it. That's a great point, Razor. Uh, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. What, what struck me too the other night, maybe this is a little bit off the subject, but wa I watched part of the game and there's no advertising on the boards. <laughs> <laughs> or on the ice. I go, oh yeah. Or on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Jim, Jimmy, did you think the pace of that game was really, really, really good? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It, that was. I, uh, like uh, Billy was referring to earlier, uh, Montreal was a, a great skating team, uh, and we were a very good skating team. Also, uh, certainly they were equal, and uh, I thought it was a good, it was a great pace. And matter, matter of fact, when I watched it, it sort of surprised me that it was as fast as it was. <laughs> you didn't realize, Renzo, you didn't realize you're that fast, Lorenzo? No, I. I, I I said, man, who, who is that guy? <laughs> you were, you guys were talking about the, um, the noise and the crowd noise. I think um, something that was missed, I wish a lot of the fans nowadays, uh, most of us players played in the Chicago Stadium. For me, that was the most, um, right. electric, most amazing place to play a game. And I think as a fan, if I was going to tell somebody to go watch a sporting event, <laughs> anywhere in the world in any building, I would say go watch the Blackhawks play in, in, in the Chicago Stadium. It was an, an amazing event. Amazing. Well, I Remember how they used to, when they played the national anthem, the organ would play and the ice surface would shake. Yeah, it literally would shake under yeah. your feet. Well, I yeah. think a lot had to do with the size of the rinks back then. The, the sure, fact, totally. Uh, totally. The, and it, the noise was great and it was like right there with you and, and you don't get that in today's game with the, the way the rinks are made yeah you are well, a lot closer only everybody in that stadium. only got one game in that stadium i remember yelling as loud as i could during the national anthem i couldn't even hear myself it was amazing <laughs> i did see a rat on the way up to the ice though <laughs> that's the only feeling you had to walk up the stairs to get to the ice Right. Yeah. Oh, Boston, you had like three steps too, but this three, one, and, yeah. and remember the Minnesota rink? Minnesota, the, the one we played at yeah, the uh, near the end, you had to walk the up the stairs center. coming out of it too, or down yeah. the stairs, yeah. Down the yeah. stairs. Yeah. Down them. It's easier down. Back in Chicago, you had to fight by the police dogs to get to the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, you mentioned the rat. Um, was there... <laughs> what, what, which which rinks? Just Chicago and Boston, Boston. or were there a few? Yeah. Boston we used to see rats run right across in front of your bench. Oh, yeah, you did. 
in Boston. You sit in the press box in Boston and you could see them running across the rafters. <laughs> yeah, Vancouver, Vancouver had the streakers and Boston had the rats. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, by the end, there was a few rats in the odd, too, because you had to open your bag up, and you kind of stood back when you opened it up just to make sure there was nothing in there as well. But they were okay. They were friendly oh, ones. Man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Popcorn. But I'll tell you a story, guys, that I thought, speaking of buildings and fans, um, that I thought was so indifferent in, in my whole career, and Donnie, you were there, Lorenzo, I think, also, and Billy and Hawk. When we beat the Russians um, just after, I think it was the Red Army team we beat, and then we played the next night in Montreal, we skated out on the Montreal form ice and warm-up, and the fans gave us a standing ovation. That's right, yeah. Unheard of. Unheard uh, of. So it's oh. never happened before in Montreal, for sure. That was an amazing moment. Yeah, yeah, it was. We've got uh, we have those classic games next week actually on MSG the uh, both games against the Soviets from 1976 and from 1980 and uh, those stories that you just mentioned have been well documented. We look forward to just you know feeling through the television screen the uh, the atmosphere in the odd for both those uh, both those games. Well, those games were war. I know. Right. Uh, right. You know, 76, that was the first series after the famous 72 series. So both uh, both countries or both uh, leagues had a lot to prove again. And then 1980, when we played the Red Army team, it was just after the Russians had invaded uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan, so, right. So there's a lot of nasty thoughts about the Russians at that time as well. So both games were really uh, like war. It was like war out there. Amazing. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Oh, what, uh, Gio, what uh, was the earliest rivalry for you before you got to, I mean, college, right? Like there. Yeah. I mean, BCBU, it started, that was the biggest one in college, uh, Boston college, Boston university. They're a couple miles apart down the same road, competing for the same kids, same, same, uh, hockey. Uh, that's where, uh, I, I learned kind of early on with that rivalry. And then, it moved on into New Jersey where uh, it was the Rangers. And I think a lot of it was with the Rangers was uh, kind of the, the guard in New Jersey was still rooting for, for the Rangers. All the fans were still Ranger fans. And it was with my time, you're trying to get that next generation of fans to be devil's fans. And so we played them a bunch, we played them in playoffs. And so that fueled that, uh, that next one. So in the NHL, it for sure was the Rangers. Uh, I, but planner like you said philly was never an easy place to go in and play like that place is scary the fans are scary like just the i think it's the demeanor of, of the the fan base that kind of gets that going in that building for sure what about well, the when we had the, and the, the, we had the matthew the barnaby factor too as soon as we got <laughs> he would start he would start chirping the fans that were, they'd fly the they'd bus. Out, yeah <laughs> start chirping as soon as we got off the bus some of those nights you talk about the fans like when I played for the Rangers and for the Islanders, when those two New York teams got together, we people were more interested to see the fights in the stands <laughs> from the Islanders and the Rangers. So was there any building like that when you guys played that you would see the, the security, yellow security jackets like rush to an area because there'd be fights and everybody's staring that way, but the game is really going on behind you. Yeah, guys. you know when that was, Marty? <laughs> When Randy Burge played for the Boston Bruins and we'd play the Bruins at home here in the odd, his brothers would be drunk in the crowd fighting everybody. They get thrown out every time. Guaranteed the Burges get booted out every time. <laughs> they, used to, they used to have a lot of They were of just from across the border, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> they we saw them this year, Duffer. I know, that's right. When Stumpy oh came back, we hey, saw the whole family. <laughs> hey, 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 Razor, I'll tell you a story, too. And, and I, I'm sure my guys will remember this. In the old Boston Garden, they had the tears, okay? Um, and they would be half of them, would, you know, not fighting, but drinking, obviously. One guy fell from one tier to the other tier. And we were watching <laughs> this. We thought he, he thought, we thought, right, Hawk? We thought we killed yeah. him. Yeah. He died. <laughs> And he just landed, he got up and started drinking. Everybody grabbed him, and it was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I remember yeah, Boston one, was a great once, place. 
I remember more than once in the Chicago Stadium again, where uh, that was a wild crowd, and the, yeah. we'd stop the game because there'd be fights going on in the stands. Yeah. For sure, the game, game yeah. would stop. Hey, tickets! Do you remember the time that I got hit with a tomato? Some in Chicago, <laughs> somebody yes, fired a tomato after you scored. <laughs> it hit me in the neck and bounced into your face as you scored, and you thought I spit in your face? <laughs> tomato that rebounded into your face? <laughs> I do remember that. Oh, oh, that's funny. I forgot all about that, Hawk. Good, good memory. I just remembered it now, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't. Hey, Derek, um, Derek, people were asking on Twitter today because our good friend Bill Whipper put pictures of you after the game in the locker room celebrating on the overtime goal. And it looked like you got hit with a tomato in the mouth because you were all cut up and everything. What happens during the game that we're watching right now that led you bled, like bloodied and all scarfed up? Yeah, I've heard that a couple of times that maybe it happened in the pile up after, but actually it happened maybe second period, first period where I, I got hit from behind, semi hard from behind and I hit my face on a dasher board and cut the, cut the lip and, you know, pizza took care of it long enough, and at the end, it just it opened up. So yeah, I had a little blood on the face. Made for a good picture, anyway. You talk about pizza. He's watching right now. So if you guys have anything you want to well, let him know, I'm going to tell him I, I want to kill him. We had Tony <laughs> Twist on the Instigators yesterday, right? And Tony Twist hit me the one night in St. Louis and broke my orbital bone. And he right. says, "Well, you need to blame Jim Pizzatelli for that because he came in our room before the game." And he said, Twister, my man's coming after you. He's going to come after you. And he, so he came after me, oh my breaks God. my orbital bone, and I never knew it until Twister told us yesterday on the radio, and I'm going to get that little oh, guy. Oh, man. He was better that, go hide in his hole because he's on my list. Was that right after he came off his hiatus that you suspended for a while? Yeah, he, he smoked right. me. Yeah, he was huge. He was ready Nine days my eye was shut, and all because of that little pizza. Yeah, <laughs> Jersey stealing little fart. Hey, Razor, it didn't stop you for going on TV. I remember you went on uh, off the record or something. Your eye was purple and this big, and you're still on TV. Well, oh, people, oh, people, Razor. the man, the man, Marty, the man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it brings up that brings up a really good uh, talking point when it comes to rivalries. You guys were in the battle all the time. So you have to live with the consequences, so to speak, sometimes of your own actions, sometimes of that of your teammate. Well, when you mention a guy like Jim Pizzatelli, I think that then opens it up, right? Okay, what's going on behind the scenes? Who's, who's twisting a screw here on somebody? Derek, you mentioned going into Philadelphia in the dressing room at 80 degrees. We all know the legend of Scotty Bowman and paint fumes in the visitor dressing rooms because he wanted to have them off their games. So, like, what are what, what kinds of stories do you guys have from behind-the-scenes agitators that just added a little flavor to these rivalries? Oh, boy, I don't know. Jeez, I can't give away some of those secrets. We, we, had, we had Sean Avery, the Sean Avery rule with Marty Berger there. That's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. That sparked things that year. Like, I, I know it's not the behind the scenes thing, but I, I'd say that guy, I'm sure, did a good job of fueling any rivalry he was a part of. <laughs> I played with Avery, so I can attest to that. <laughs> I was at one point, I was like, no, stop. We don't want to go into this right now. No. So. Hey, hey, speaking of trainers, you guys, you guys will get this guy. Maybe I know the guys I played with in Montreal. And right, I don't know if he was still there when you were there or Marty. Remember Doc in the dressing room? Hey, hey, you guys. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. You yeah. remember little Doc? Yeah. You know, I'll never forget. I'll never forget when um, we went there and played them in, in, in the playoffs. And Punch told Rip Simonic to stay in the dressing room. Don't let him be in the room because you know really what happened from that situation down the road uh i believe was a mcsorley hook stick you know because they had to know right. when they made that call so yeah you had different guys in the room and especially during the playoff times you didn't want any any secrets out <laughs> yeah well that that same thing happened with uh, when we measured ken dryden's pad remember right 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 i was just gonna yeah, say we had Gar Snow had the shoulder pads, the big things right. on his shoulders. That kind of, kind of affected controversy too. Looked like he had a coat hanger in there. 
Yeah, but then Steve Schultz took care of that. <laughs> and Tony Esposito had the extra long jersey up between his and legs. He had, he had the webs between the legs, right? Yeah. yeah. Spider web. Yeah. Hey, Derek, Derek, I've got to ask you that, that the overtime goal you scored, of course, I, I was broadcasting that game, and uh, I don't remember much about the game except the goal that you scored. When you were going, when you were going down the ice, like sometimes a, a forward, when he gets a scoring chance, he knows he's going to score. What What were you thinking at that moment? Uh, did you have some kind of an idea that the puck was going to go in the net? What was going through your mind? No, I don't think so. I think just you know, fortunate to get the turnover where it was. You know, those are always bad turnovers at their blue line, and I had a bunch of speed. And I think at that point, you're in overtime. You just hope that you know, getting a shot on net and get enough of it that it, it gets on or gets in, but. Um, I guess I didn't know that it was going to go in by any means and just fortunate. Yeah, so, that it went in. so you were surprised. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was, you know, just like anybody else. It's like, Holy cow. that <laughs> You know, all that stuff goes through your mind right away going, Holy cow. I got, I scored. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. You, you just had a chance to embellish it beyond belief. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Like I knew it was going to score. I just picked it off and went in and went top shelf. That's, well, that's what I tell my kids. <laughs> And the story would have been more like I saw Run Tugnut adjusting his glove at the start of overtime. Something was wrong with right. his strap. And when he tried to catch the puck, it just rolled on him and then it went in. So there's a story right there. But but Derek, Derek had a heavy shot. I remember yeah. following Rent, like Jimmy said, he had a heavy shot when he yeah. shot the puck. It was zipping. Yeah. Well, Thanks, time yeah. Just started on MSG right now. Derek, what uh, led you to the heavy shot? I don't know. Just a lot of slap shots. I remember in college, we would, I would spend about an hour before every day in practice just shooting one yeah. time. Me and Buddy yeah. would just shoot a lot and shoot, shoot, shoot. And I like to shoot it. And I don't know if I, I wasn't that heavy. So just. Did uh, you use a, a wood stick or did you know you use... about that? <laughs> yeah. I had the aluminum stick, the aluminum <laughs> shaft with the wood blade. So it was good. We were, I was a stick guy. I had a new blade just about every day. Yeah. Anybody yeah. who wants to have a heavy shot, talk to Maddie Ellis. He's the guy that like, uh, teach you and help you but now he he does it with he's, all the composite sticks well, so. he, yeah he shoots it better now than he did when he was playing though marty he skates right, better right. he shoots better he does everything better now than when he played Are you well, kidding me? razor that that's the that's the key it's to, it's to retire for three years going thousands of hours on the ice and then it re, reinsert your back reinsert back uh, reinvented yeah. I, I, I think that's a that's the key right there that's the recipe Hey, yeah. If Mike Tyson can make a comeback, Mandy Ellis, get in the gym and let's go. <laughs> oh, Marty, I, 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 I've, been, I've been in the gym, bud, during this uh, <laughs> challenging time, this quarantine time. It's uh, it's medicine in the morning to, to get up and get after it. But, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's really cool just to, you know, sharing these stories with you guys to see, you know, how the game has changed, how it's evolved. I, I, I have the game on here watching and just, you know, the style of play. Uh, you know, what, what's changed in the game, but the things that, that run true are the things that we spoke about, the emotion, the rivalry, the, and, and even on a call like this, where we all share that bond as, as alumni members, just being able to, to sit and connect over, over stuff like this. And it feels like we're just all hanging out, which is a really cool thing. And that's, that's the beauty of the game that we all, we all love and played. I just have one thing to say about, I, I really miss the, would help, the fans and everything was that the ability to have a referee that you could identify and hate. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Kerry Frazier? Well, you had, you had, they had their names on their jerseys. So you yeah, knew. you're right. Yeah. And, you know, you, they all had their own style of, of refereeing, but the fans would get into it and start hating it, you know, like they'd call them names and every chant names and stuff like that. And that still helped the fans and us get into the games. Well, they do now. Hey, 86, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> they used to, they used to chant Wally, 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 Wally Harris. Wally Harris. Remember? Wally. Oh, he was brutal. He was just <laughs> brutal. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> Sorry, Wally, but you were. You were just brutal. <laughs> it's like I that Trottier the guy. Line, the line's been guy's guys. name. <laughs> the the linesmen were good guys like oh, Leon Rocky, and Johnny. Was it Rocky Trache? No, I don't think it was uh, Trache Racer. No, it was the referee Trache. No. Yeah. yeah, he was awful. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, the, the, the he was a guy is, that, that, that gave Donald now. a death, the butt ending penalty in Springfield the year we were in the Calder Cup <laughs> finals. That's yeah. right. And it was the dumbest penalty, the worst penalty that anybody should have. He did nothing. And he gave him a, a major penalty, and we ended up losing. Yep. I hate the guy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you really feel? Yeah, exactly. He kicked me out of the last game at the odd, too. It's like, come on. Oh, I'm under it. Jerk. You wanted to be kicked out at the last game. No, you want to be kicked you out. wanted your pimps to go up that no, day. You know what I had a chance to do? I got a chance to sit in the room with all these guys when we were taking down the banners. We were That's right. here for two periods while everybody was out there playing. <laughs> awesome. But Razor, didn't you come up a few minutes shy of 300? Remember you and Mayday were talking about that in that game? Oh, I could have been. I don't yeah. know. I think I think both of you got tossed just before you were able to get to 300. So like goals, you get so many Duffer, you forget about those. <laughs> Man, did I get a nice one against Toronto the other night? Holy schmoly! <laughs> remember those, huh? Oh, I got to rate my right Razor, there. I remember the That's first goal you scored. Remember that? Pardon me. Razor, I remember the first goal you scored. They just called you up. I think you played your first game in Pittsburgh. Yes, I did. And first shift, first shot, slapper. Right. You know, I think the only goal I ever scored in a slap shot. Jennerett and I were saying, who is that kid? Where'd he come from? <laughs> hey, and Jocko, when you said you were like, oh, you didn't know the puck went in? I, I, I did that 41 or two times. Never knew the puck was in every time I scored. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. Get the hell out of here. It wasn't oh, here, me. Beauty. I didn't put that in. Remember somebody scoring a goal there um, 18 seconds into their first game. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think I think it's I think it's his birthday today too, isn't it? That's right. Yes, yeah. tickets. Hey, Mr. Garrett. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Yes. Yes. May, four, May 14th, many moons ago. But um, tell him the story uh, it, about the first goal. Well, it, it, <laughs> oh, it's it is it's kind of funny because when you look when you look back and and you think about stuff and and you, you know when you were playing all your minor league hockey to try to get to the NHL and i remember sitting next to you you were in far about Aji and Luce and Ramsey and we were at the one end and um, i remember Floyd Smith i'm waiting for the big talk to come in you know like the speech the, the pep talk before the game <laughs> he walks in and he goes turns around looks oh boys Got to play it, might as well win it. And walks out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Smitty, but I do remember that. And uh, I said, around him, that's it. My legs were going 100 miles an hour. He's, that's it. He says, but let's go out and, and do something. So we went out and picked off against Cashman, Esposito, and Hodge, and Bobby Orr. And Puck came back to uh, Shoney and around the boards to Lucy, I think it was. And, Rammer took a shot, whipped on it, and I scored between Cheevers' legs at 18 seconds. And it was like, I'll never forget it. Lucy gave me the puck, and I was like, wow, this is – maybe this I belong here. Maybe I belong, you know? <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> well, it was, it was a fun night, and it was something I'll never forget because we kicked their butt. I think it was Don Cherry's first game as a coach, too, uh, for the Bruins that night. But we went on that year to have an – unbelievable year and it just was kept going and going and going right yeah so. yeah awesome that was that was our rookie years danny mine as well and it was an unbelievable year we had a great i team. followed you out every game yeah the western and my roommate you were my guy yeah. I followed out every game i played with the buffalo savers billy yeah that was uh, pretty cool pretty cool yeah. good so. We're watching right now. I see Duffer's got his eyes glued on the TV. He's watching. You know, there's five minutes into OT. Derek, do you remember when you scored? How much time was left in the overtime? No, I don't remember. I don't. It's coming up in the next minute. <laughs> Come on, Derek. I don't think I've got to watch that whole game since. I don't know if I've watched it. Well, it will be on NHL.com tomorrow. So I'll you check can it show out. your kids and be like, hey, just show them the end, right? The, the face off. <laughs> And the end of the game. Those are the good ones. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Derek, hey, hey, Lorenzo, I, I, Lorenzo yeah, go ahead. Uh, did you know that the bat was coming at you there at that time? The what? The bat. The bat. <laughs> no. No, I, um, well, the bat had been flying around the odd all night, if you remember, dive bombing the crowd. And, um, 
I remember uh, earlier in the game, it came down near the ice and Bernie Perrant started swinging his goalie stick at it. And uh, he missed it. And I says, well, it's the only thing that Bernie missed in that series was killing the bat. But I was no standing kidding. there waiting for a face off and I just happened to look up and the bat was flying towards me. And uh, I just reached up and swatted the thing out of the air. And the funniest part was it landed right in the face off area and the linesmen, the referees, uh, looking at each other, nobody would touch it. Rick, Rick, McLeish, Rick McLeish for the Flyers took his glove off, picked it up, picked and it up. buried it yeah. in the penalty box. Well, I, I got I got letters from all over the country. If people wanted to have me arrested and you know, <laughs> throw me in jail, and so it was uh, it was pretty unusual. And of course, those. Those were also a couple of games, uh, the fog games here at the at the auditorium, uh, of course, it's, which is part of the Buffalo history. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember playing in the game uh, when the blizzard hit here? We had 13 players playing in Montreal. I, I was one of the players that didn't make it that oh. night. No, I, I couldn't get to the airport. So no, I that's a good question, television. Donnie, because the, the other night when we showed the playoff game against the Canadians in 75, you guys only had like 15 uh, players or 15 players dressed and Montreal had like 17 or 18 dressed. So now it's always 18 skaters, two goalies. Was there, did that happen a lot in the seventies where maybe you didn't have a full squad, a full roster dress? Uh, not, not very often, but usually you had a full roster. I think they had a full roster for the game. There were just some guys that didn't play at all. Yeah, exactly. The only That's game that, remember where we had a short staff was that storm game where we got uh we only had nine uh, nine forwards 4d and two goalies that made it to montreal and we only that's the minimum you're allowed i think is 15 15 players total and i remember that was an amazing game we come back we were down three to one in the third and ended up tying the game against montreal so that was uh that was pretty awesome with only going with 15 players yeah i remember because we flew in and we had uh we got in about two hours before the game. We all had uh, hot dogs before the game. Joe's. <laughs> Can't show. Much all the great Razor, team. I think Razor, they... you've had a few of those, haven't you? Yeah, I have, Jocko. Yeah. I don't mind the uh, Shea Show when I'm there. It's your record, Razor? I still have my own little box every game when I am. They're only like two bites a piece, so you got to have like half a dozen. What's your record? What's your record, Dave? Razor? Six, seven? No, the one night, Marty, when I was with Ottawa, I went into Montreal, wasn't playing, sat in the dress room with the trainers. I got to 18. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then we bust back from Montreal to Ottawa afterwards. I had 18 hot dogs in my belly sitting on a bus <laughs> making that track back to Ottawa. It was the worst thing ever. <laughs> wow. Oh, it almost put me in the mood to go up front and talk to Jacques Martin and tell him how I really felt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jacques oh, was just uh, on the wrong end of it here in uh, game seven as uh, Derek Plant's goal has happened and uh, uh, the club moves on to round two against the Legion of Doom that you mentioned, Derek. And uh, hey, the one thing I, I was really impressed with, I, I, I happened to look at your Twitter profile today and, and it was, it's pretty telling, I think, how much Buffalo still means to you. you. You won the cup with Dallas, you work for the Hawks, but your profile pick is you in a Sabres uniform. Yeah, I mean, if I was an NHL, I still identify with Buffalo. That's where I spent the majority of my time, and probably my best hockey buddies are from there. So uh, that was a great time. <laughs> I'm not even gonna touch the cup thing. That was that was its own thing. Yeah, <laughs> we almost had you on last week's call, Derek. We wanted you to talk to the guys from the '99 year, but uh, figured maybe we were gonna keep you for this one, <laughs> more suited for this night. Yeah, right. Oh, it's yeah. So Buffalo is a great place. It has a uh, special place in my heart for sure. Well, we don't hold against you, Jaco. We don't hold it against you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Where does the Christ, name we come wanna... from? Because I know we have Batman and we have you know Hawk and well, where, where does the nickname Jaco comes from? Uh, Jacques Plant. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, well, Marty. Know that. Come on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? you so I'm going to get Whoever's in charge, cut this? that screen right off. He should doesn't even deserve to be on here. <laughs> He's got to give his goalie card back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're not a goalie. You, 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 you don't. You shouldn't be named that way, Derek. You're not a goalie. 
Well, it looks like Danny's ruined our opportunity to sing him happy birthday on the way out here. Yeah, it looks like it. Find him. He stepped away, huh? No, well, I think oh, he's yeah. a kid. Remember the phone died? I think so. Oh, he's yeah. mad that we waited 54 minutes before wishing him happy birthday. So he said, I'm out. <laughs> he's having a piece of cake right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Danny, happy 75th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, we just want to thank all of you for being on here. Uh, if you have a, a last word um, as we go around the horn here one last time, uh, that would be great. Hawk, uh, why don't we start with you? Well, I think uh, Ticket said it earlier. We, we should truly thank all the caregivers in, in, in the tough time that we're going through, especially it's a strange time for all us hockey people. My time in Buffalo was phenomenal. I live just outside of Montreal right now. The people in Buffalo, and you guys know this, like the passion and the way they treat us over the years, it's just phenomenal. And it's, it's, it's terrific hooking up with all you guys now. And thanks a lot for putting it together. Thank you, Larry. Jim, it's been really great uh, reminiscing with you this year on the 50th uh, season. Uh, what else can you add here tonight? Yeah, I, uh, just second uh, what Larry said, and I think uh, Danny said earlier about thanking our, our uh, health care workers who are out there day in and day in, day in and day out, and, uh, you know, putting their health on the line uh, to, to try to help everyone, and uh, certainly it's deeply appreciated, but... Uh, uh, it was just great joining you people. Uh, nice to see everybody once again, and I've really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Jim. Derek? Yeah, I, yeah for same thing. Uh, Jim, too, particularly. It's great to hear your voice again. I haven't heard your voice for quite a while since the days on uh, TV, so just that, that, that picture is great to hear you again. And it's great to be part of this, and, and good to see your faces. Thanks for the memories tonight, too, Derek. We appreciate it. Maddie. No, I'll, uh, I'll echo the same sentiments. Um, obviously, wish everybody on uh, on the call tonight health and safety uh, moving forward. And again, just, you know, e echo the sentiments uh, before me, you know, thinking about the healthcare workers and, and people on the front lines during during these uh, these crazy times for, for everything that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and share stories um, and connect, uh, you know, with, uh, with the brotherhood that, uh, that kind of bonds us all together. It's been, been fantastic. And like I say, I wish everybody health and safety moving forward. Yeah, Thank you. Great to, great to see you, Matt. Bill. Uh, I don't know where to start here. Actually, um, I feel very blessed. I played my whole career here. Um, it's been an yeah. amazing, amazing time. Uh, we've been living in this house, uh, 45 years ago yesterday. Uh, wow. my son got a chance to to coach his hometown team for a couple of years. Uh, obviously it hasn't worked out uh, since then, but uh, um, I have nothing but good th things to say about, uh, about the Sabres organization, about the town. I, I love Buffalo. Uh, we've raised our four kids here. Um, it, it's the best and uh, it's nice to see the guys. Uh, it's, a, it's been a big part of our life for sure for all of us. So thank you. Awesome, thank you, Bill. Gio? Yeah, same thing as everyone. Thank you to obviously all the, the healthcare workers, the frontliners that are that are battling day in and day out uh, again for us to come on here and, and create some entertainment for the fans. Obviously, thanks for the fans for tuning in and uh, hopefully, you know, forgetting about uh, the crazy time right now. But uh, I think like the other guys mentioned, the brotherhood, uh, being on here, listening to the old stories, uh, for me, that's what it was all about is listening to the stories and uh, seeing how things were and, and uh, all the time before us. And, and, you know, hopefully the players do the same with our generation, but thanks to the earlier generation for setting us up and making us feel good. And uh, thank you to Buffalo. We, we live in Buffalo. We, we reside in Buffalo. We stay in Buffalo. We love the fans here. And I'm just happy to be a part of uh, the Sabres organization. And uh, Dunleavy, is that uh, a real jersey or is that superimposed back over your shoulder there? I appreciate no, that. That's, buddy. A little shout out. That's <laughs> yeah, it's a little shout. Out. That's actually uh, that's my wife's jersey. She wants your autograph on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, buddy. No, I don't so know where she wants an autograph. Don <laughs> <laughs> Luce. That's a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I just want to say it's just 
you know, it's just a real pleasure to be part of the, of the hockey family. You know, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to play with these guys and to, to watch them play. And, and uh, you know, again, it's just a, a wonderful thing. You know, it's something that I don't think every a lot of people don't have is the sense of community that is amongst the players that play the game. And uh, also thank the fans for helping us along and, and being such a big part of it, of winning and losing and, and being part of the team. And a special thanks to the first first responders and the frontline people that do the, the dirty work and, and have to do the job that uh, has to be done. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a wonderful thing and it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. And as Matt said before, wishing everybody a, a safe, safe uh, time with, with the rest of what goes on right now. Thank you. Well, thanks to all of you. I know Razor, Dan, Marty, I think we've been on the air enough that uh, we've definitely, you know, been, been sharing in these types of feelings on a weekly basis. But uh, I don't know if either any of you guys have something else to, to close it out with, just being around such a, an elite group of uh, blue and gold here tonight, Razor. Well, you know what, Duffer, I will, because, you know, we run the, the Alumni Association and tell you we got a very strong group. we got a lot of guys that are willing to put in a lot of time and effort to make things happen. And every one of these guys are a huge part of it. And for me, I would just say thank you to these guys for help, direction, and a lot of support over the years. And if anybody needed a grandfather, Lucy would be the perfect grandfather. <laughs> and just hear the nurses get him back to his room. Billy, I'm looking forward to seeing you sometime, especially at the rink when you bring the donuts. That's awesome because he walks in with a big box of donuts and hands them out to everybody. So all those guys, just little things like that from everybody that uh, just makes it all so special. Fabulous. I was... Uh, Supporting the Alumni Association here tonight, Razor. I don't know if you can see. Oh, that. that's, that's good. Uh, that's you yeah. got her, Duffer. There we go. Danny, <laughs> when are what? you going to get that jersey Ryan. signed? <laughs> well, listen. The um, this the this is the reason why I, I took up this career is to get to know the players in the game. Uh, the players are the game. The players are the character. The players are the pieces. You talked about how fans would boo the referee because they knew who they were. Fans grew up knowing who you gentlemen were and they love to love you or they love to hate you. And that's what sports is all about. And obviously in Buffalo, we love you. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me getting to know every single one of you, Derek. I don't know you that great, but I'll get to know you over the years. I know being here in Buffalo now. So, uh, but just a class group of guys. And I'm just so uh, happy to be around these guys now and with my career here in Buffalo as well. Any well said. And Marty, congratulations. You pulled together a heck of a group here tonight. Oh, that was a heck of a group. Listen, uh, you know, I've been following up on Facebook all night and uh, want to give a shout out to Medic Burns, who's been on the front line through this pandemic. And you guys all said, uh, you know, about the front line workers. So we got to give him a thumbs up, obviously. A lot of family members were on Facebook tonight saying hello to uncle and grandpa. And, you know, they're all there cheering for you guys. That's great. And I'm going to leave you, every one of you, with this from Linda, who says, you guys put a smile on my face, and I really didn't need a dad right now. So you guys put a smile on my face, too, and that was so great. So thank you to all of you guys that uh, wanted to be a part of this and join for this uh, Sabres uh, re rivalry week uh, Zoom call. Absolutely. Guys, thanks so much. The watch party couldn't happen without uh, your careers and your you know, continued support of this organization and, uh, and the stories that you share amongst us and the thousands of people that have enjoyed your play over the years. We'll wish you all well, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching, Thank folks. You. All the best. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys.